Hey guys, so in today's video, I wanted to break down this beautiful Euro USD trade that we took inside of the VIP group just last week. Now, the reason why I want to break down this trade is because it is a beautiful example into exactly why we as traders don't have the liberty to just set and forget these trades. We have to actively monitor the charts to understand exactly what price action is trying to tell us. So in this video, you'll get a breakdown of exactly why we entered this trade how we actually manage the trade and then stay till the end to find out what actually happened with the trade and if we actually ended up making some money or not. But without further ado, let's jump straight into the trade breakdown. So here we are inside of the VIP Discord and as we can see, this is the EU buy in question. So this was me sending the buy limit into the VIP group. And as we can see, I've highlighted the fair value gap where we took the entry, the stop loss and obviously the take profit as well. Again, if you guys are not part of the VIP group and you would like to join the community, then hit that link down in the description and come and say hi. But this is the trade that is in question. So let's jump onto the chart so I can tell you exactly why we took this trade. So as we can see on the four hourly, Euro USD is super bullish. We've been creating a series of higher highs and higher lows, and then we've just gone and broken structure and put in a brand new higher high. Therefore, expectational order flow tells us that our next anticipation is that price is going to come down and give us a higher low before a continuation of that trend to give us a breaker structure and a brand new higher high. So with that understanding in mind, we've now identified our four hourly area of interest where we anticipate price to come to before giving us that higher low and then pushing for a higher high. So right here, we can see that this order block is the one that actually gave us this breaker structure to the upside, which means this was the originator of that move. This means this area is very likely to hold as this is where the majority of the volume came into the market to give us that break of structure. So once we've identified that on the four hourly, what we can then do is actually drop down to the hourly and refine it just a little bit more. So as we can see, this is the hourly zone inside of the four hourly zone, giving it that extra confluence to give us the understanding that this is the area where price is potentially going to reverse from. So once we've understood that, we've highlighted this area. We're now simply just going to wait for the markets to actually come and give us a tap. Now, up until this point, we're not doing anything. We're just sitting on our hands and we're waiting because we have to have a entry confirmation in order for us to enter these trades. There's no point putting an entry at the open of this order block because price can very easily just slice through it. There's no reason that price has to hold in this area. If price wanted to flip bearish, it most certainly can. Therefore, we have to have our entry criteria be met before we can actually execute a trade because without an entry criteria, we're simply trading blind. So we're waiting for price to come and give us a tap into this order block. Now, on top of all of that, what we're also doing is we're also anticipating a sweep of the Asia lows to then come down and tap us into this area of interest. So if we go down to the five minute, what we can now go and do is identify our Asian session range. Now, for me, the Asian session range is between the times of 7 a.m. and midnight UK time. So the Asian session range starts at midnight and then ends at 7 a.m. in the UK for me. So right here is midnight and this was the highest point from midnight and then the lowest point would be all the way down here. So this was actually seven o'clock. So right here is the lowest point of the Asia session range. Now, as we can very clearly see, price has then swept the Asia low, again, in line with our trading plan. And it's also come and tapped into this higher time frame area of interest or our order block. Therefore, we've now ticked off two of our entry criteria tick list. And this is now going to be giving us our foundation for this trade. So as we can see, once we've tapped into this area, we're now waiting for a market structure shift as this is our key before entering a trade. Because if we don't see a market structure shift, then there is really no reason for price to want to reverse. So what we can see is that price has given us a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and then a lower low. Therefore, in order for us to get a market structure shift, price has to break above this previous lower high and give us a brand new higher high. Once it does that, we can then safely take our entry at the higher low 
and then we can ride it all the way to our target levels. So in this instance, I'm going to clean up the charts so that we can now add in our market structure shift. So I'm going to remove this. And if we zoom in just a little bit, we can see right here is where we want the markets to give us that market structure shift from. So once we understand this, all we're simply now doing is again, sitting on our hands and waiting for price to give us. So if I play price on, we can see that price doesn't break above it just yet. It has, it has wicked but it hasn't closed above. We need a body closure. It rejects and then finally it goes and breaks and closes above that previous lower high. This means we've now just put in a brand new higher high and this means we can now start to get involved with this trade. The markets have shown us that they've tapped into a higher time frame area of interest. They've taken liquidity in the form of the Asia session range and they've given us a market structure shift to tell us that price is now looking to turn around. So once we have all of these confirmations, we now have to identify where are we going to take an entry? Well, for this, as we can see right here, we've got this massive area of inefficiency. This means within this area, there was all buyers and no sellers. This means that this area is inefficient because the markets like to be efficient. They like to have the same amount of buyers and sellers in the same area. So that, that way there is equilibrium. At the moment, there is no equilibrium because in this area, there are only buyers and no sellers. Therefore, it is highly likely that price is going to return back into this area to in back equilibrium into the markets. Therefore, this is where we are looking to take our entry and we put our entry at the open. We put our stops just below the low. And then now our next step is to identify where is price going to go and where is it going to stop? Well, for this, we have to go up to the higher time frames, and on the higher time frames, we again have to identify key areas of interest. Now, first and foremost, we've, of course, got our Asia high. Now, this is a key level because if the Asia low is taken, nine times out of 10, price is then going to want to go and take the Asia high. So this is number one where we are going to target as our take profit one. And at the same time, we've also got this supply zone just below the Asia lows. Therefore, this can be an area where the sellers are enticed into the market before they are swept along with the Asia liquidity. So with all of that in mind, we can then safely say that this is where our initial target levels are going to be. Therefore, making this a one to 2.76 risk to reward trade. Now, once we have all of that understanding in place, we can then safely place our limits right here at the open of this fair value gap and wait for price to tap us in. So if I play price on, Price misses us by literally 0.4 pips and then it runs away and it rallies away quite far. And this was getting quite late in the day. As we can see, it is around 1.15 in the afternoon. It is also Friday. So we are wary that price kits are going to close soon. Therefore, with that understanding, if it does get any later, then we will probably not be looking to take this trade. But if I continue to play price on, what happens? Price comes and taps straight into that fair value gap and closes it. Now, this is what I mean by the markets don't like inefficiencies. They like to be in equilibrium. As you can see, price came back and closed out that fair value gap. So now the markets are back in equilibrium. This also gave us our entry. As we can see, we've just been entered into this trade right here. But the problem is it is now 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It is late New York session and also the volume is starting to dry up. So if I play price on, we can see that price just chops around for a while. It doesn't really give us any actual movement. It's simply just chopping around in the same place. It's not doing anything. It's getting later and later in the day. And with that understanding, all I'm thinking is it's Friday. The markets are slowing down. It doesn't seem like the volume is kicking in because we haven't got a breaker structure. Price isn't pushing the highs. It's just consolidating. So with that understanding, I then actually told everyone in the Discord to close the position at a one to one risk to reward. So if I actually bring this down, we can see that right here price was actually at a one to one. So just there. And when it was consolidating right here, 
I told everyone in the Discord to close the position for a 1% gain on the account because it's Friday, price is consolidating, and to be honest, I'd rather be doing something else than staring at the charts on my Friday afternoon. So with that understanding, I told everyone to close the position for a plus 1% gain on the account. And if I play price on, we can see that just a short while later, price then actually does turn around and it goes for the stop loss. So this is why I tell you that it is super key as traders. We have to understand what the markets are trying to tell us. We have to understand when the volume is starting to dry up. And we also have to understand that sometimes when it is Friday, volume is drying up and it's getting late. There's no point trading. Close your positions and go in and enjoy the rest of your weekend, right? So we actually closed this position for a plus 1% gain on the account. And that was that. So I hope you guys enjoyed that trade breakdown and you actually took away some key valuable lessons into exactly how to manage a trade and also what signs to look out for when price is starting to turn away from your intended direction so that you're no longer in these unprofitable trades and you can actually exit your position earlier. But on that note, guys, if you did enjoy this video, then please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.